Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Ramsey's Ultimate Decades Challenge. We are currently at the very beginning of 1335. I am back from vacation and while I was on vacation there was a trailer for the new stuff pack so I just wanted to start off by saying that thanks to the EA Creator Network I'm actually hosting a giveaway for the Crystal Creation stuff pack and all the information for that will be available on my Twitter. That'll be ending on March 3rd so you guys have a until then to enter for a chance to receive a code for that pack. I'm actually really excited about it. You guys know that I love doing mundane little tasks and hobbies on The Sims because it keeps me busy. Also, fun fact, my mom used to be a jeweler. She is a certified gemologist and a diamondologist. So I know if she played The Sims, she would be all up on that pack. So go check it out. I'm actually really excited for that pack. And I might do like one or two episodes in relation to that pack. Why don't you guys comment below and let me know what kind of content you'd be interested in seeing me post like just a general pack overview or maybe creating a character for one of my series I don't know it'll just be for fun nothing major just to show off this pack uh so that's that again I'm back from vacation and I'm at that point where I feel like I need a vacation for my vacation because <laughs> it was very busy very crowded but also uh I liked having the time off I did miss my sibs of course but after the last episode I did need a little break uh you guys mourned with me. I still can't believe that happened, but I will say that I'm glad I caught it when I did. I just happened to be checking it after my gameplay and it probably would have been inevitable. So if that had happened at the beginning of this episode, knowing I would have lost James, I would have been so mad. <laughs> so I'll touch on what this means for George a little later. And finally, this took a few more days to get out because I did want to prep a few things. I've mentioned before that I have a separate NPC timeline where I kind of try to keep track of when to age NPCs up and trying to marry them off so that I can populate my save a little more. I actually thought that before I start my gameplay, I would just update you guys on what some notable NPCs were up to, who I married off, if there are any births or anything like that in this episode, I'll go ahead and just post it here since like my goodbye Matilda and Elric videos, I did want to focus on James's goodbye at the end of this episode. I'll go ahead and put that footage in right now. Okay, so there actually weren't any surprise births this episode, thankfully, but I did discover a few pregnancies. I'll only reveal a couple here, but there are a few Rolf family pregnancies out there. I spent a lot of my prep breaking up houses into quote unquote rentals so that I could leave some room for families. I mostly did that for the castles and stuff. So while I was in Tartosa doing that for Aria, I found out that she is actually pregnant. So hopefully this baby makes it. I also don't have a picture, but I did go ahead and marry off Marjorie, the princess of Henford to Marco's younger brother, cause they are both teens. So I split off that household put them all there. I actually also went and paid Quentin a visit. I'd married him off to Giselle Capet and literally the Capets have taken over the entire save at this point. They're married to everyone. <laughs> But he and Giselle have been staying at the keep. I did replace it with this castle estate residence by Lixie underscore 170 because uh, they use the new pack and I think it's beautiful. So I put them there. They also have a baby. They have had a baby for a few episodes, but I went to age him up into an infant. The game automatically named him like Rico, but I renamed him. His name is actually Caspian. So he's Caspian Lionette. And yeah, I thought you guys might want to see Quentin because he's the younger, unproblematic prince and seems to actually really love his wife. So good for him. But also while I was visiting Quentin, I saw he's really sad because someone died and I was like, it can't be Melissa. And I checked and one of his sisters died. She fell to her death. I don't know how that happened. Suspicious. I also went and split up the royal household into little room apartments, I guess. And I did roll to age up Prince Edward. He's okay. So he's a toddler now. And Ida is actually pregnant too. So I won't say how far along she is, but she is with child. So another prince or princess is on the way. And you guys haven't seen Harwin and Joan in a long time. They're doing great. They love each other still and they're living the peaceful life that they deserve. So then another thing I did was visit 
Greg and Belle's home. I did split one of the rooms off so that Catherine could stay there. And I moved in Hazel, as well as Hazel's younger sister, Deanna, who should be aging up into a teen pretty soon as well. And Hazel and Kat are into each other and they're super cute. And also while I was just like taking these cute screenshots, Hazel like autonomously talked about marriage with Kat. <laughs> so they, yeah, they're really into each other and we love it. The gays have won again. So <laughs> that's actually a lot less than I thought I would bring you guys. There are, like I said, a few, a couple other pregnancies, but I'll bring those up when they come up. <laughs> and okay, uh, I'm sorry if this was a long intro, but... I'm actually starting off at Talia and Pierre's place today because Cyrilla is due to age up. So I wanted to just get that over with here. Miriam is actually here reading her grandson a little story. Sophie's cooking a breakfast, I guess. It is pretty early. Uh, this is pretty much almost immediately after the last episode. I did go ahead and add the Regency Romance mod. It has a lot of cool features that I have to check out, but I'm really excited to explore those with you after this episode. Uh, I am going to go ahead and change Sophie's aspiration. You guys, of course, did want to see her on the road to becoming a lady, and we did cover that a couple episodes ago. So let's go ahead and just change her aspiration. So it comes with this Regency aspiration. There's Reformed Rake, which is, I think would have been good for Leo had I had more time since he was supposed to be more rakish, but I did have to go, you know, the primary goal and objective of this challenge is to get as many errors out there as possible. There's also Rags to Riches. There's also Truly Accomplished and Lasting Legacy. I, I feel like Rags to Riches would be more so trying to work your way up in a trade. This also comes with a bunch of traits and careers. There's so much about this mod. Definitely read that PDF because I'm not going to go through every detail here, but it, I'm so excited to try this out. So I think Truly Accomplished might be good since we know that Sophie's basically going to go into like etiquette training and whatnot. She'll get to learn some music. She'll pick up painting, etiquette. The, there is a way to learn etiquette here, which is so cool. And, you know, just working on all that stuff. So as you guys know, I think I'm going to focus on Sophie's story as far as a primary side household storyline kind of like how margaret had the arranged marriage or the whole royal drama etc so i think that'll be a good way for me to focus on someone other than the main household but not have to scramble and figure out what i'm going to do with everyone obviously everyone's going to have their own trades they're going to have their own lives my goal there is to just summarize the death rolls as they come pretty much so uh i'm actually also going to have talia and pierre woohoo again because i still have the option to see if she's pregnant so i don't i don't see that she's pregnant she might not be she might be but i'm gonna try it again for some reason she is out there she went for a run i guess uh but I, i'm gonna have her and pierre try again for my own peace of mind i guess because they only have one baby and i want them to have more <laughs> Oh, and it looks like the poor cat is sick. I'm so sorry, Cinnamon. While we wait for Talia to get here, I'm going to go ahead and roll for Cirilla. All right. So. She gets to be a teen. Thank goodness. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go ahead and just age her up here. I won't do like a whole birthday celebration just because I'm going to be focusing on George a little bit for some obvious reasons. So let's go ahead and just age her up now. Okay, so Cirilla looks like she's an insider, I guess. She's happiest surrounded by her friends. Okay. I'm not sure if that would go with the serious trait, though. I don't know. Let's let's try one more. Nope, she is not the monarch. <laughs> okay, she's a cat lover. She loves her baby cinnamon. Let's go. I love that she aged up with this weird pink alpha hair, I guess. Oh my gosh. Yeah, let's go in and change her up a bit. <laughs> She's so whimsical. Okay, so here's Sophie. She is so pretty. She has Rolf hair and eyes. 
but she actually looks so much like her mother, like as far as facial structure, just like Sophie. So she is beautiful and I love her. And I actually forgot to roll for marriage and babies. So I'll do that now. And I'm actually realizing that this is the episode where we lose our, our Rolf heir. And Cyril is actually the last second gen Rolf offspring to age up into a teenager. So, wow. Second gen, we're over and done. It's crazy. But let's see. So first I roll a d20 to see if she gets married. Okay, so she will get married. And now I roll a d12 to see how many baby tries she gets. So she gets five baby tries. Awesome. So there's our pretty girl. Looks like she's out here doing yard work. Also, I'm sorry for the constant changing in lighting here. I have been sort of tweaking the shader that I use just because I do want it to look a little better in the final product while also not compromising how my sims of color look because some shaders do lighten them significantly and i don't want that like this i think does a good job in not making pierre and talia and gideon too light so i did have other shaders that did make them too light and i just didn't like that so i'm still just testing a few things out some of the lighting gets compromised and <laughs> i've tried to just make even it all out you know, oh, little cinnamon doesn't feel good. And I don't like that because I can't take cinnamon to the vet and it makes me sad. And the pets in this game get sick so often. And here's Miriam still healing. Everyone does have a sad buff. You guys need to, I need you guys to move from here because your sister's about to try for another baby. Ladies, please. Okay, you know what? They're going to take this out to the shed. Oh my God, we need to clean this cow. Hold on. Siri, why don't you go and clean this poor cow and give her a name? Uh, Bluebell is so common. How about, let's just call her Bess. Okay, so, okay, Tully is going to go get freaky in the shed. <laughs> well, oh no, right in front of Cirilla. <laughs> Sorry, Cirilla. So, I actually also wanted to mention that one of my, <laughs> one of my, long time viewers abby suggested that maybe cirilla somehow ends up with antoine and they're not related by blood at all she also wasn't raised with him so there's no like familial dynamic to make it weird and he actually just turned 16 this year so i know he i gave him his own baby tries but if if you guys think that he and cirilla might make a cute couple and you want me to somehow have her end up on the ship because she was a little hellion maybe she wants to go find gwen because she and gwen did get along yeah she's actually pretty close to gwen and they're both cat lovers so and also uh not <laughs> i did go to the ship just to like move john and Irk and everything and this is what antoine looks like now he looks so cute <laughs> I actually think he looks so, he, he reminds me so much of Carrie Elways in The Princess Bride. So I don't know, you know, little Cirilla was a hellion. I think she'd be a little weary about leaving her mom alone. But I don't know. You guys feel free to tell me. So now that Pierre and Talia have done the deed, I'm going to go ahead and head over to the main Rolf household. Okay, so we're supposed to be back at the Rolf farm, but we're not quite there yet. But I did, you know, I am going to touch upon the situation a little more. It looks like George is talking to one of his neighbors here. This is Salida, and she's actually a sim created by Darkwolf323, who also created Margaret's Apothecary. So thank you. She's actually a part of a group of peasant NPCs that I had put in this file a while back, but they all moved to another world, <laughs> which happens semi-frequently. But she's actually married to Nolan Benner, who is the brother of Olive Benner, who was one of George's marriage prospects. I'll get into that a little more in a second. Uh, I guess she came over to give her condolences for the awful loss. So, um, you know, poor George is actually super sad oh no selena is romantic don't be 
d please don't act up. This man is in mourning. Um, let me go ahead and have him officially go home. Like, thank you for checking up on me. Okay, so we are officially back at the farm. It looks like James is back here. Why don't you, you know what? I'm going to have, I'm going to control James and have him hug poor baby George. I can't, I still can't believe it, guys. This, this is just maybe so sad. Um, go on and hug your son. Of course, uh, Genevieve, how did you get up here? Can you not? Thank you. Okay, I'm going to have Jenny go here. Um, Maple is here with her brother. They're, <laughs> they're so sad about losing their mom. They probably can't even comprehend what has happened, you know? They just said that she is not here. Also, I need to fix the lighting. It is so dark in here. Also, Maple is due to age up in a couple of days, which is crazy. She's, gonna, she's like, okay, I need a snack. So James is just hugging his boy, consoling him. Oh, I'm glad you didn't think my llama jokes are getting it. Okay, sure. And I'm just so sad for George, my guy. He developed the gloomy trait, so I'll take that as he's just so depressed. Melissa is literally the love of his... Even Midnight knows that something is up. She's not happy. We know that she was Melissa's horse. And all of Melissa's grapes for her wine hobby, I can't. I've also gone ahead and just added James to the household because you guys know what's coming. Okay, Mabel's doing her thing. Oh, no, Arthur. You know what? I won't even get mad at you for that. No, nope, you're not going to splash in that, please. Why don't you go here? Play with your horsey a bit while I gather myself. Oh, and George is on his way to mourn his wife. I can't. It just... This is rough because you guys know, like, George is a flirty sim. Melissa was very much the exception. He's loved her for a long time and for her to just go away so suddenly i think in the future whenever my sims have babies i will have them go to the quote unquote midwife right after because i'm not sure if maybe that's sort of a requirement to prevent that sort of thing from happening but i'm also concerned because at this moment arthur is our only direct heir to the Rolf name. Of course, we have little James, um, but he doesn't have a male child. Off screen, I, I do just go have my side households woohoo to see if they have any more babies. But in checking out my spreadsheet, Arthur isn't due to become quote unquote marriageable until literally the year of the Black Death. And I am just worried because Anything can happen between now and then and during the Black Death. And I need to make sure that I have my descendants. So as I said, the primary goal of this challenge is to make sure that we keep making those heirs. And realistically, I don't think George would want to seek someone else. But I also do think he would want like a partnership where he can ensure that his kids are being cared for because he also has to work make a living he is trying like the cheese making skill the cheese is the catalyst in all this i'm gonna blame the cheese for all the bad things happening but i think he would also want to honor melissa's memory by continuing the winemaking you know he he's got to keep busy make sure that his family is cared for and whatnot but i also need him to make more airs <laughs> I'm sorry, Maple. Okay, stop splashing in the water, please. Look at him, he's on his knees. So, you know, of course, like Elric, I think it could develop into something else. But as far as his prospects, I will touch upon that right now. So, look, he's just so sad. Morning death of a loved one, widower. A friend has passed. Should I be more lenient? I took away fears. You should not have that mourning period widowhood it's cus this is from the regency mod it's customary to observe a prolonged mourning period to show respect for one's fallen spouse so that's like seven sim days almost two years in spreadsheet terms i'll see how i deal with the time and whatnot crying toddler oh 
Oh my God. He's so stressed out. He's overwhelmed, but he's got some confidence. He thinks he's capable, but he's just overwhelmed at this time. So I, I think um, James would be understanding if he needs to take a sec. So I'm going to have him go to the tavern and explain my next steps there. Okay, so we are at the Marketplace Tavern. It looks like Esther is here. I guess having some alone time. And Trader Jacques is our mixologist. <laughs> so I'm going to have George just go order a drink, uh, unwind a bit, try to clear his mind, which, you know, alcohol will not be clearing his mind. But he, he just needs a moment. And he is just retreating to one corner of the bar so i was looking at george's former marriage prospects and the list that we had previously when i was initially trying to find him a wife olive uh i had kept in the file ended up marrying her off to one of the peasant sims and then of course millicent ended up getting with john so that leaves two girls that i ended up removing from the file which were idra and annette i believe and then i realized that also, Shifra Kendrick ended up moving to like Tomerang for some reason with her father. So she's unmarried. So I've got three girls that were already sort of in this file or already a marriage prospect for George that I thought I would have him talk to here. And I would choose which one based on his compatibility, possibly if he finds them attractive, um, see who he gets along with the most first impressions, all that stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and just bring them onto the lot. Okay, so here are the bachelorettes. Uh, he, I'm pretty sure, or maybe just Emmeline was friends with Shifra because it, it showed up as like him not knowing her. So we're going to go with some first impressions. And I have gotten some more CC since I last added them. So I went and changed a few things here and there just for fun. Look at how cute Annette is, first of all. She's so pretty. So Annette Beaufoy from Willow Creek initially. She was created by HVBGSUK. Again, these are all in my Rinzi Decades tags. And originally she did come with two brothers. She had escaped Willow Creek with them after a bounty was put on their heads by their parents. But I did go ahead and remove her brothers from the file just because of household size, just in case. So that is Annette. Then there's Idra, who is laying on the sass. <laughs> what is that face? So she was created by Deep Brick 88. Deep Brick is another longtime watcher of this channel. Idra is in the hashtag. She didn't have a backstory or anything. I, I did have her and Annette at the Abbey, but she's very pretty. These girls are all spinsters at this point. <laughs> so yeah, there's Idra. And then of course there's Shifra Kendrick, who was created by Anubi Sim. She's been an OG. She's been around for a while. Like half her family ended up dying in the Great Famine. She became friends with Emmeline, I believe. She did show up with her sister who mysteriously disappeared. I don't see her in my files at all. I don't know where she went. Uh, her oldest brother ended up dying. You guys know that her brother, Fionn, who's actually younger than her, did end up marrying Charlotte. And I believe her mother ended up saving her father from death during the Great Famine. So he made it. I aged him up to an elder. Her mother has actually passed away. When I went to go check on the family, she was gone. It did show her as ghostly, I believe. I don't know when she died, <laughs> but she did. So it's, it's just Shifra and her father living in a house. Her father's an elder. She is also a spinster because, uh, while marrying off all these NPCs, I did not see her in Windenburg. I did not realize she'd gotten a Tomerang. And then after I married off Fionn, I was like, where the hell is she from? So here she is. Whoever doesn't end up marrying George, I'm, I, I do have a few more peasant NPCs that I'll go ahead and marry them off to just to populate my save file. So thank you guys for these Beautiful Sibs. Again, uh, I thought George knew her as a child. I, I'm pretty sure he spoke to her at some point, but it, it's showing up as, as if he doesn't know her. So I'm going to have him go ahead and introduce himself. He doesn't have the option for a polite introduction. I'm also going to go into the reward store. I'm going to give him the observant trait just so he can learn everything about them at once. So... 
Let's go with Annette first, and then Shifra, and then Idra. Okay. Oh no, I forgot to age them up. <laughs> They're not supposed to be teens. Okay, hold on. I did age up Shifra, yes. Okay, she is a young adult. Okay, so they have aged up. I don't know what their extra traits are. Let's go say hi to Shifra. He's probably like, oh yeah, I remember you from my childhood, right? I'm glad you don't think my llama jokes. So they probably like reacquainted themselves like, oh yeah, I remember you. We're literally neighbors, but you know, I've been busy with my own stuff. And she's good, cheerful, and logical. And then finally, Idra. And I'll reveal all sentiments and stuff in a few. Oh, she's got a parasol out. <laughs> okay, so... Oh, Idra's a rancher. <laughs> and she's neat and romantic. Rancher probably came from me aging her up just now. So let me actually find out what Annette's other trait is. This is my... Oh, she's squeamish. So this is my uh, air version of my speed dating sims. So you know what? Let's let's have him take a page out of Uncle Elric's book and have him play cards with the ladies. Just they're probably like, you know what? Let's with Shifra being a long time neighbor that he forgot about, apparently, I think, you know, she would pay her respects, be like, I'm so sorry. I heard about Melissa's death. She is probably friends with Melissa too. George just befriended a hardworking Sim. Who is it? Is it Shifra? Because she's saying something right now? Yeah. Okay, so he seems to be getting along with her. A hardworking Sim is not afraid to put a bit of... Okay. She's hardworking. Okay, so... Yeah, they're probably like, let's... Let's just get your mind off things for a bit. Uh, obviously, not forget the wife that you just lost, but... Oh, a little smile. Okay. And all these ladies are so pretty. I really love the hair that I gave Annette too. She's so pretty. I can't. And I did get like new skin details. So I, I went through and just like changed a few things uh, throughout town. You know, George has a pristine reputation. George is a shining beacon of positivity. Despite it all, he is our golden man. <laughs> I love him so much, guys. Oh, he's, he's he's trying so hard. He's trying. And I think this is just a good way to keep his mind off things. And he, it looks like Idris is just like, you've got this. Uh, she's trying to cheer him up here. I think Annette's taking this game very seriously. I am also very competitive. I am a Leo. <laughs> Idra. Yeah, this does feel like a fun little moment knowing what's to come, so... I can't with the cackles. But I think the sun is setting. Oh, there's Olive's. Oh, Beatrix. This is Olive and Nolan's mom. She's she's probably giving her condolences as well. So it's 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 starting to get dark. I'm I'm going to have George go back home. Oh, it looks like Idra had to head out anyway. So let's have him go back home and then I will check his sentiments with these girls. Okay, so we are back home. Let's see what George thought of these ladies. Oh, he's got a little pep in his step. Okay. I think going out helped, you know? I'm also going to go ahead. Uh, I did just have the... This is the original Rolf and Friends Club. I'm going to start a gathering just to have Margaret and James come over to, you know, come spend some time with George and their father knowing what is to come. So look at our guy. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> so we've got Annette here. So it looks like he actually admires Annette. Uh, he does think she's attractive. The compatibility is not great. But you know what? It did say that Matilda and James had bad compatibility. So what's the truth? Okay, then we have Shifra. Neighbor, amazing compatibility. He does think she's attractive. He thinks she's fun to be around. She thinks he's in dreamland. It's not called dreamland. It's called depression, Shifra. Okay, so those are some good sentiments. And then Idra. He thinks she's stuck up. <laughs> he thinks she's attractive. She thinks he's responsible. Yeah, he's a single dad who works two jobs, who loves his kids and never stops, you know? Uh, so, okay, well, that didn't help at all. I'm not sure if I should pull it, uh, but you guys are welcome to plead your case down below on who you think the next Mrs. Rolf should be because I need to get things moving. He might get drafted into war. So that could put an even bigger delay on creating more babies. So yeah, we need to uh, 
get him past his mourning period. It says seven days. I might remove that buff after a bit. Maybe I'll give him like a year in spreadsheet time. He's feeling flirty. Got game like an alcohol induced Casanova. Unflirty George. Okay, well, he's a little tipsy as well. He's going to go take care of his baby. Uh, but I did go ahead and start that club gathering. Little James should be showing up soon as well. Uh, why don't you go say hi to your daughter? Why don't you go ahead and hug her? Not the parasol. Oh, Margaret. Margaret, who uh, she probably feels terrible after being there for the baby. She probably felt awful about Sarah passing away. But now, you know... She is really close to Melissa, so this really is Matilda and Emma vibes, and it breaks my heart. Oh my god, it says she's a daddy's girl! I've never seen that pop up. I can't. I can't. This this makes me this makes it hurt even more. Okay. James can cook a bit, so I'm gonna have him make a little meal. Why don't you make a foul hot pot? Yeah. That sounds good. Here's Ginny with the stories once more. And you know, uh, Maple's sleepy. So I'm actually gonna see if she can have Margaret help her. You know, Margaret's here. And I will have them interacting more with their cousins and stuff when they're children. Because it's just easier versus bringing toddlers everywhere. Because, you know, the roles have always been close. Let me have George tuck in Ginny. And then he can also tuck in poor baby Arthur. Okay, so the children are asleep. Hold on. Where's little James? Is, is, is he still far? That kid is walking. Oh my god. Okay, well, okay, no, he's here. Let's have all of them grab a serving here. Okay, so yeah, that's, that's all these guys. Let's go ahead. Have everyone grab a plate. Oh, and it says James. <laughs> He's got the strict family dynamic. He probably went into strict grandpa mode. So here James and his babies. Of course, we miss John so much, who is now out at sea with his uh, not boyfriend, I guess. It makes me so sad seeing them here without their mother and without Melissa here. They're such an awesome close family. Like, it just... Oh, <laughs> Little James is out here making Margaret laugh, too. And I think they're just having a moment. You know, just... Obviously, they all have, like, very sad buffs because of Melissa's death. But they've always tried to just, like, be there for each other in the face of tragedy and whatnot. Let's see. Oh. Why is James feeling f flirty? Okay. And then, of course, Margaret is mourning Melissa... She's always so confident. We love her. Like old times for being in your family. Deep connection. She's so happy being around them. Uh, and then of course, you know, James. Like old times. Reminiscing. Deep connection. Feeling close. It's just, you know, they're all feeling pretty good. Of course, like I mentioned in the last episode, he's had years, decades of just being sick from asthma and margaret working with herbs has of course tried to help him try to alleviate some of that pain but that inability to like catch his breath but it's something that would inevitably catch up with him of course since they're out here reminiscing as they catch up i do think they'll kind of bring up like oh how's your bard career going with your wife and whatnot and i think james is like you know i used to want to do what you do and i think he is super proud of little james for following his dream because he had to take care of his siblings very young he didn't get to do that he took up his father's trade uh he does have a loot in his inventory so i thought maybe he would strum a bit for fun here he is playing for the crew <laughs> i guess george went to go check on the babies and little James is like, yeah, dad, he's so got it. Look at him. Let's try to do one more. Let's do play song, bard. And here's James just having a little moment in his happy place. Just 
Rem I don't think he's played music in so long. I'm going to take the kids back there talking as uh, complimenting their dad's skills, too. <laughs> but look how happy and into it he is. And I'm remembering that time that James just randomly started playing for Matilda and she was just listening so intently and it probably just brings it back to such a happy place. And you know, I feel like he would tell little James, let's see what you've got, my boy. He's like, don't worry, old man, I've got it. I chose the play with emotion option. Look at him watching little James. He's listening. I think he's just so, I think he's so proud that at least one of his kids... John too. John really liked playing the vi the fiddle, I guess. Look at him, he's like, you're doing so good, son. <laughs> and little James is so confident. There's a song called Black is the Color of My True Love's Hair, and Lila does have black hair. <laughs> Look at him, he's like, I did that. <laughs> and you know what? Black was also the color of mom's hair. Jesus, true love. I think James is having a moment. James. Yeah, I think we're gonna have him go hug his boy. And I'm sure he's thinking back on that time where he and Matilda were looking back on their kids and be like, we did it. We raised these amazing kids. If only John was here. And he's got a sentiment with Margaret. Closer from happy memories and adoring because she's a daddy's girl. I'm gonna have him come hug her too. Yeah, no huggy James is just, he loves his baby so much. And they're supportive. I can't. Once again, guys, I am getting emotional over these pixels. <laughs> and finally, hugging our poor baby who just lost the love of his life. It's already 3 a.m. So... I think I'm going to go ahead and end it here on this happy note. It's a sad goodbye. Of course, stick around for a little more because I do have something kind of planned. But also, I've had you guys comment on a few things below. But also, if you haven't already or if you want to like edit your comment, why don't you tell me your favorite James moment in this series? This feels like the end of an era. I feel like there's been so much triumph with James. This guy had a great marriage. Most of his children survived. He had a beautiful supporting wife. He had incredible children. His wife saved him from death. <laughs> but it didn't come without its heartaches. He lost his parents very young. He had to step up for his siblings and watch them pass away despite doing his best to be there for them so obviously he's due to pass away during this year so i imagine that at some point the asthma does take its toll on him but i'd like to think that his kids were all there 
to say goodbye to their dad. I feel like an episode like this could have benefited from me like writing a script. <laughs> I guess like a eulogy for James, but just going off the top of my head, I, I've i just really enjoyed the time that I have spent with James and his siblings and their spouses. And I have grown a similar attachment to all the next generation. Um, and I know you guys have too, so. Thank you guys, as always, and I look forward to seeing you for the next one. Bye!